This is what new client onboardings are supposed to look like. So today I'm going to show you the new client onboarding system that we're using in my AI automation agency. But to be honest with you, this would really work in any online service-based business. First, we fill out the onboarding form with all of our client's information, including our scoping document and proposal. Then it creates a Google Drive folder for all the client documents, then a ClickUp folder with a ClickUp list. Next, it analyzes our scoping and proposal document to determine what steps are required and then it adds all of those tasks to our ClickUp list. You can see all of those being added right here. Once that's done, we create a Slack channel, send a welcome message, and then send all the information, including the drive folder links, the calendar scheduling links to the client in a welcome aboard email. All of this takes around 20 to 30 seconds and the client immediately starts getting notifications within seconds of paying that they are now onboarded and they have access to their dashboards and portals and everything that they need. Now that you've seen the magic, let's take a look at how this is built. But really quickly, if you like these kind of videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, if you want to download this and a lot of other free templates, click below, head over to my free school community where we have over 6,500 members and we are growing fast. Now let's go ahead and dive on into this build. So to start off, we have this triggering on a form submission that the internal team would be submitting. That being said, you could trigger this off of like a payment received or a contract signed or like a CRM opportunity change, for example. That's what uh, that's what we do. Um, but for the sake of this example, it's easier to have all of this in here. So on the form submission, we have our fields, we have our client name, email, uh, company name, website, uh, and then we have a place to upload the proposal and scoping document. Now we created a mock proposal and scoping document for this particular example. It looks something like this. This is a little bare bones and basic, but this is designed to just give us an example of what it could look like. And the form just looks like this. So for this example, I'm just going to use my name again. Let's go to Nolan. And we'll do Nolan at And then we're going to add in that document and we've got our mock proposal right here and we're going to submit. Now, when we do this, it extracts from the file. You can see that the binary field is named proposal underscore uh, scope underscore document. We pull that all of the fields correctly populated. From here, we rename the document project information. And this is really more just to keep track of what it is. Then we create a Google Drive folder and we're using the client's company name. So from the form submission here, we're using the company name right there, um, plus client folder uh, to create a Google Drive folder. And you can see here it created the Google Drive folder. Next up, we're renaming the folder ID. There's a lot of fields in this particular workflow that have ID. We just wanna make sure we know which uh, ID we're talking about or calling upon. So we named it uh, Drive Folder ID. And to do this, we simply dragged and dropped in our newly created folder uh, ID from the uh, input of this node. Next up, we create a ClickUp folder. In this node, we essentially set the space location that we want the folder to uh, live in. And once again, we're naming this the company name and the client folder. And to do that, once again, we pulled from the uh, form submission. You can see here it successfully created the folder underneath my space. And if I go back to the workflow, the next is to create a list. And so we're creating a list inside of that folder that we just created. So we're taking the ID from the create folder right here. We're dragging that in so it knows where to place it. And then we're naming the list, whatever that might be. In this case, it might be client name um, onboarding. And you can see in our ClickUp that this list has appeared right there. And when it initially populates, obviously there's no tasks. The next step is it's gonna come down to our AI agent. Now, the reason we're using an AI agent, not simply a message model node, is we want a structured output parser um, in order to get all of the fields looking the way we want and passing on to our follow-up agent. So you can see here for our user prompt, all we're adding in is the project information. And that was the PDF that we uploaded. And you can see the JSON for it right here but you can see the expression for it over here. So that's all the information from the proposal and scoping document that we, we listed. And then for our system prompt, we basically just have, hey, you're an onboarding agent responsible for reviewing a proposal and scoping document for a new client. Your job is to extract a comprehensive list of actionable tasks, assign appropriate task titles, estimate duration, and generate due dates accordingly. Final output will be used to populate a ClickUp folder for the team to begin onboarding activities. Context, the input is provided as a plain text string containing the proposal and scoping document. You are operating in US Central Time. The current date and time must be noted in each output to calculate due dates. All due dates should be in month, day, year format. Tasks should be based on standard estimated durations unless otherwise specified in the document. The task list should be detailed, including uh, 20 to 30 to-do items to cover every minor and major step involved. Instructions. 
Read and analyze the scoping document contents. Break down the onboarding process into detailed subtasks. For each task, create a clear, concise title. Write a description with enough detail to guide execution. Estimate and apply a duration from today's date. And then format the due date as month, date, year. Structure the output to be easily transferable into ClickUp. And begin the output with the current date and time in the U.S. Central Time. Tools. You have an internal clock set to U.S. Central Time. Next, you have a parser to extract and organize the tasks, and you have predefined duration rules. If not provided, uh, use default estimates per task type. And then we have examples of our inputs, and we have examples of our output right here. And as our SOP, just capture the current date and time in US Central Time, parse the document, extract all major and minor tasks implied or directly mentioned, expand each process into granular to-dos, 20 to 30 items, assign a title, detailed description, and calculate a due date for each task, ensure output is formatted cleanly for ClickUp import. And then final notes, default duration is two days unless otherwise indicated. If a task's due date falls on a weekend, roll it forward to the next week, uh, weekday. Focus on actionable and sequential items, tool setup, access requests, documentation, meetings, integrations, QA, testing, etc. Each task should represent a unique and independent step in the onboarding flow. So once this has done that, you can see the output here is all of these tasks that it decided were necessary in order to accomplish uh, everything that was needed for the scoping document. And then from here, it only passes one giant item as a string with all of these different fields in it. So what we wanna do is we wanna split this out. We're gonna use a split out node. We're just simply going to drop in uh, the tasks. From here, you can see we're passing 29 items over to our loop over. And this loop over is simply just going to add each of the fields. Now, the reason we use a loop over is to properly populate each individual tasks. If you tried, for example, to use an AI agent here, it would simply take one task and then populate it 30 times. So we loop over the items, we add the click up, and you can see in here, with the loop over items, we're adding in uh, our folder ID, our list ID from our previous nodes, we've got our name for the task, and then we're adding our content, which is actually the description in ClickUp, and then our due date, which is uh, right here from our loop over node, and then we're setting our priority. Uh, in this case, we're setting it to normal, which is a three. So if I come over here, this is what it's gonna look like. You can see here we have all of our tasks. The due dates are appropriately set based on uh, the duration of the project or roughly how long it might take to do that task. Um, it is a little bit more spaced out than I would probably want, so you might wanna create some rules specific to your process or what it is you do um, that basically helps guide the decisions of the due dates on this. But you can see we've also added the priority here um, and the uh, assignee. That means this person is gonna get all the notifications for all the new tasks that they have now been given in the timeline that they've been given them. Now I could build an entire video on just uh, connecting Slack to Innate In, um, but basically you wanna just create the Slack connection and then create a channel. And for this, we're just gonna call the channel the company name and then underscore channel. But in order to do this, you have to make a couple of changes. So on the form that was submitted, you'll notice that the company name has spaces in it and capitals. Slack doesn't work with spaces or capitals. So we created a different JSON to help reformat this in real time. So what this does is it takes the company name from our initial form input. It removes all of the spaces and replaces with an underscore. And then it switches all of the letters to a lowercase and then adds on underscore channel. The result is the company name with underscore channel at the end. You can see my new Slack channel right here that's created. Now that the channel is created, we wanna send a message. So we're gonna come in here and we're going to select resource message, operation send, uh, and then we're gonna select the channel that we wanna send it to. Now, since we just created this channel, we have to pull the channel ID from the create channel node, which is right there. So once we drop that in, it, it's gonna properly populate with the brand new channel that was just created. And then we're gonna send a simple text message. For this message, all we're doing is saying, hey, welcome, and then we're using their name from the form. We're excited to have you here, and then we give a little bit of details about what this Slack channel is for, how to use it, and kind of a sign off from the account rep. Now, what I would probably do here is if you know who you're gonna be assigning as the project manager, um, I would add in their name to not only the ClickUp tasks, but also to the Slack welcome message and then to the email message we're about to send as well. Once we've created this message, we're now just gonna send the final welcome aboard email. So for this note, all we're gonna do is we're gonna connect it to our Gmail account. We're gonna set our resource to message operations send, and then we're gonna add in the email address from the form. And then we're gonna come down and we're gonna create a subject. 
Now, if I wanted to make this a little more personalized, what I could do is switch this over to expression, come back down to my form submission, and then drag and drop in the name. And essentially, it'll show up as, hey, welcome to Proven Digital. Nolan, your onboarding is complete, or something to that effect. Next, we're going to set the email type to text. And for our welcome aboard email, we've got, hey, name, welcome aboard. We're excited to partner with you and your team to help scale your business with the AI-powered systems. Your project workspace is live. We've already kicked off the initial project scoping. You should be receiving invites to the following. So Slack, our main communication hub, ClickUp for tracking project tasks and progress, and then Google Drive for sharing access to all related assets. Next steps, please upload any relevant documentation here. Now for this, all we're gonna do is pull the ID from the folder that was created earlier on. And we can come all the way back here to uh, create main client folder. And we're just gonna tack on this ID to the root Google Drive uh, domain right here. Next, we're gonna schedule your onboarding call. So we're gonna share our onboarding call link. And then uh, sit tight, we'll review your uploads before the call and come prepared with next step recommendations. If you need anything or have questions in the meantime, feel free to reach out anytime. Look forward. Uh, to what we'll build together and then have our name and email here. So guys, this is a really effective onboarding sequence. And now there are 50 to 100 other things you could do depending on your tech stack and um, how you wanna integrate your team with the onboarding process. But as a straight line onboarding system, um, this one works incredible. Once again, you can use this pretty much for any online service business and it should work pretty well um, with only a few minor tweaks to it. So with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And again, if you wanna download this template, all you have to do is click below, head on over to my free school community uh, where we have over 6,500 members and growing. And if you liked this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for stopping by. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.